Hello. In this video lesson, uh, we will consider the empirical result known as the Leontief paradox. So Leontief paradox relates to the Heckscher-Lean model of international trade that we have co considered in the previous uh, video lessons. And it is quite obvious that uh, the assumptions of the model are somewhat uh, simplistic and uh, unrealistic in the real world. Uh, However, at this point, it's good to maybe emphasize that um, that uh, goodness of uh, economic models is is uh, not just based on how realistic assumptions it is making, but rather does it make some some uh, useful uh, predictions about the about the real world. So the main uh, main implication of this Heckscherlin model is the Heckscherlin theorem, which uh, suggests that the country that is abundant in a factor exports the good whose production is intensive in that factor. So this, uh, this, this result was empirically challenged by uh, Vasily Leontiev in uh, 1953. So I, I should tell about Leontiev that, that, that he is a, a very famous Nobel Prize winning economist uh, um of of russian origin but but uh, who made his most of his professional career in the usa so uh, leontiev had uh, had, uh, had detailed uh, um statistics of the of the usa he's famous for his input output uh, model and input output tables uh, so using those uh, those input output uh, data uh, he could show that in fact uh, the usa which was uh, the most capital abundant country after the Second World War in the 1950s, uh, the USA was actually exporting commodities that were labor intensive uh, and more labor intensive than the, the commodities imported from the rest of the world. So, so this is in exactly contrary to the, to the hexer ullin theorem. And uh, in, on this slide, I have also taken from the uh, Krugman et al. textbook uh, uh, a table which is based on uh, Robert Baldwin's uh, article and this is also then confirmed later in 1962 data with this US exports and imports so we can see from this uh, this uh, this uh, data that for example capital labor ratio dollars per worker so that's the third row for imports it was uh, um, capital labor ratio was uh, almost eighteen thousand dollars for imports, whereas for exports it was only only fourteen thousand. So, so this indicates that uh, that uh, indeed uh, uh, USA was e even in the in the early sixties importing more capital intensive goods than it was was uh, was exporting. So that seems to seems to empirically contradict the the, the main prediction of the. Heckscher-Ullin model. So, but typically, typically in economics, we also don't really throw away a model very, very easily, especially if if we are really fond of it. So there have been, of course, several attempted reconciliations of the Leontief paradox, uh, and all of these actually relate to the to the basic assumptions of the of the model. So remember that in the Heckscher-Ullin model. Uh, the production functions are same for for both countries A and B. So that means that technology is the same across different countries. But uh, this is one one of the likely explanations for the for this Leontief paradox because um, if if the technologies are different uh, and uh, at the in the early fifties and sixties, of course, USA had um, had a superior productivity compared to the to the other countries. So it means that uh, that labor productivity of the USA was also higher than in in most other other countries. So if you are not not only counting the number of workers but also take into account the labor productivity into account, then in fact the uh, uh, labor productivity of the or high high labor productivity of the USA can imply that actually USA was was labor abundant at that time. Another, of course, simplifying assumption of the Heckscher-Lee model is that, that that the consumer preferences are the same across countries, but that can be also also different, and that can also, at least to some extent, explain some of the anomalies that we can observe empirically. 
A third source line of explanation relates to the fact that, of course, uh, the Hexerlin model takes into account labor and capital, so two, two factors of production. But uh, we have also other inputs to production, for example, energy. And uh, there are scarce factors uh, in, such as, uh, such as uh, energy sources. For example, uh, oil resources are, are scarce. So uh, indeed, if we take into account also, also energy and natural resources, then, then empirically we can see that, uh, that the USA is importing more resource-intensive products. And then finally, of course, the, the Hexerly model um, in its basic form assumes away uh, both transport costs, but also, also other impediments to trade, such as tariffs. And uh, when explaining the Leontiev paradoxes, also, also then uh, some uh, researchers have pointed out that uh, the US tariffs uh, for labor intensive products tended to be higher than tariffs for capital intensive products. So, so of course, this kind of tariff structure can also give some, some kind of bias to this kind of, uh, uh, or it can influence that, uh, that the, the empirical uh, observations differ from the predictions of the, of the theory. Uh, but of course, also, also, it's good to note that uh, this kind of um, critical discussion and attempted reconciliations that also brings more attention to the hexer lean model, making it more more kind of uh, so, so so a model that is is uh, somewhat controversial and attracts a lot of debate. Also, also makes it an an uh, interesting and and that's why it also remains an an uh, a textbook model in the in in also in our our course. So. In the next video lesson, I will then, then briefly discuss the so-called standard trade model, which attempts to reconciliate some of these kind of limitations of the, of the Heck-Sherlin model. Thanks and bye-bye.